Hello Bampton fans and welcome to this Yonex Nano Flare 170 Lite Bampton Racket Review and this is racket number 659. Right, let me just bring up the eZone page for this so we get all the information we need. Um, availability, as you know already from the other Nano Flare uh, uh, racket videos, is pretty good. It's available most places. Um, the, the price of the Nano Flares is 170 light around 60. So at the point of making this video, July 2019, this is okay. So the 170 light is about 65, the 270 speed. Uh, 75 the 370 speed about 85 and the 700 145 weird pricing structure they i think it should have been something for about 110 kind of but anyway that's how it is um let's go for the racket specs as we always do and compare uh the racket specs compared and compare them to our own uh e-zone specification testing this is a 5U racket, 75 to 80 grams. The E-Zone weight test shows this racket to weigh 82.8 grams, so it is really lightweight. Um, the balance point on this racket is supposedly headlight, according to the manufacturer. None of this information is written on the racket, by the way. This is only, it's, only thing it says is 4U and the string tension. Um, the balance point is headlight. The racket review E-Zone balance point test shows this racket to have quite a significant weight towards the head. Okay, 316 is going quite a long, uh, quite a long distance towards the head. Yeah, I don't think this is headlight, personally, but see what you think if you've got one in your hand. Um, the shaft stiffness on this racket is supposedly flexible according to Yonex and the E-Zone uh, shaft stiffness test shows this also to be a flexible shaft. So uh, maximum string tension only 26 pounds just do not understand why that is the case. Um, so this is 26 pounds the 270 was 28 pounds and the 370 I think was 28 pounds and of the 700 was 30 pounds. The Kampu 10U lightest racket ever made is 30 pounds. Why can they offer that kind of string tension and the one of the biggest names in the brand is not willing to? I don't understand. What you know, it makes me it concerns me a little bit. What why is that? Is it a warranty thing? Is it a quality thing? Is it a strength thing? I just don't understand why. But anyway, 26 is the maximum, guys. Um, outside of that. Uh, this is a G4 grip on this racket, it's the size of the grip G4, and it racket is made in Taiwan, and I can tell you the racket is made to a really decent standard. This is a matte black uh, racket with just graphics, same graphics pretty much as the 700. Um, all, of, all of the Nano Flare range, very, very similar in design. This one, in actual fact, I probably prefer this design to the rest. Uh, maybe the Nano Flare 700 is also quite nice, but yeah, it's it's not that exciting. None of them are that exciting. This is qu quite nice. Uh, take a look at the close-up images and see what you think for yourself. Okay, so now we've been through the specifications, let's now move on to the Racket E-Zone. Okay, so before we start our E-Zone testing, what do you need to know about how we test our rackets? Well, first of all, we use the same shuttles. The Yonix AS30s on all tests. We string, restring all of the rackets with Yonix BG65 at 25 pounds tension. And it's the same player 
taking all of the shots. Right, now you have some basic understanding of how we test. Let's move on to the smash test. The smash shot that you're seeing here and for all of the rackets we've tested within Badminton Racket Reviews E-Zone, uh, we take generally six shots. We take the two highest uh, racket uh, shuttle speeds and we average those to give us a overall speed. If those two uh, if those two readings are not within a certain percentage of each other we then retake the entire test. This shot measures the shuttle speed uh, coming off the racket head and also if you go across to the e-zone you'll see a picture similar to the one you're looking at on the screen now which accompanies every single racket within the e-zone so that's nearly 650 or more rackets with this kind of smash JPEG showing you the racket head speed, the shuttle speed, the distance and the approximate repulsion of the racket. Right, our first test in the E-Zone is the smash test. Let's do it now. Okay, it's time now for a E-Zone maneuver test. The maneuver shots was designed to tell us about the racket's acceleration abilities, its ability to shift from one direction to the other or shift quickly from nothing to full speed. It also tests the racket's um, aerodynamics. In this test, the player is sitting still with the racket and once the shuttle is fired which we, and we measure the shuttle speed to ensure we have uh, consistency within the tests so it's coming at the same speed all the time or roughly the same speed as, as, as much as we can control anyway um, and then the player reacts once the shuttle is fired to hit the shuttle and we are measuring the head speed of the racket during that test. Right, so the smash test and maneuver test are done. Let's now do an E-Zone control test. The E-Zone control test is a simple test. It's, uh, we've, we've had a lot of comments about this test. Uh, the first thing you should know is that 14 shots are in total are taken, not just what you see on camera. Um, the player is aiming for the green bucket which scores the highest, the grey bucket scores slightly less than anything in the net or out scores nothing at all. Now the same rules apply on this test as they do on any other court test. It's the same shuttle, it's the same string, same tension, same player. Um, now we have um, retaken the test with the same racket to see what kind of variation we get and we generally find that the results are within 10 to 12 percent of each other so the, the test is not that bad and it is generally very hard to come up with a control test uh, that's better than this. We've tried. So, but if any of you have any suggestions on how we should proceed with control tests in the future, please do give constructive answers that are helpful. So we have done the specification testing, we have done the court testing, what do we think of this racket? Well this racket actually provides a pretty good balance of performance. Um, if you like, I like lightweight rackets, this one is actually quite a nice one to choose because it's, uh, it's not the quickest in the air. Uh, I, don't, I think maybe this 
massive head that they've put on this, on the Nano Flares, could be a factor in terms of the speed, I'm not sure, but they don't feel, even now doing that, it doesn't feel as quick as say the Apex Wave 10 or the Abros Venom, they just feel a lot faster than this racket. Uh, certainly nothing in comparison to the speed of the Kampu 10U, that is a crazy fast racket. Um, but outside of its airspeed, it does deliver decent smash power, respectable smash power. Um, the swing weight, going into the E-Zone page here, the swing weight of this racket is, is 84 grams. So that's pretty good too, that's pretty good. Uh, and, and I can also tell you it has plenty of repulsion, this racket, loads of repulsion. So, um, overall, I would say that, believe it or not, this racket would actually be okay to play singles with. I know singles players like heavier rackets, but I just don't understand why. If it can do a good clear, which it can, great. If it offers reasonable level of control, great, which it does. Um, and if it can offer a reasonably decent smash, which it does, great. They're, they're the three primary shots in singles. So I would say definitely consider this racket at this price point for singles. Doubles players, uh, yes, it is going to work, but I do think that the Abros Venom, the Apex Wave 10, Abros 9, Nano 9900, and the Nano, Nano Flare 270 speed, 270 speed, are just better than this for the doubles player. Great drivability, suffers a little bit in defense. Uh, the Venom is gonna outsmash this. The 270 speed, I think, with time and practice would be a better all-round smashing racket. Uh, the Nano 9900 has the same kind of air speed. It's a slightly slower racket in the air. And this also doesn't feel as quick as the weight suggests it would be. Uh, so they're very similar. Um, and the Wave 10, it does feel a little bit quicker, but the Venom out of the four is the fastest, and the 10 you probably the quickest out of all of them. Um, has a decent sized sweet spot as well, so it's quite a forgiving racket to use. This is the kind of racket you will buy, you will pick up, and you will enjoy fairly quickly. It's not gonna take you weeks and weeks of practice like the JPX range, but I have to say that JPX range, when it comes alive, it's quite uh, quite a range. Um, so what's the conclusion? The conclusion is upgrade to the 270 speed. I think you'll have an all round better racket and you're not going to feel like you're dealing with something really super heavy or super strenuous with the 270. So if it is a nano flare you're after, go for the 270 all round. It will perform better for you. If you want to open yourself up to the marketplace, the Venom has a much smaller sweet spot, so it's less forgiving, but its overall performance is quite electrifying. Um, if you want to go, um, the Nano 9900 is a very similar feel in terms of speed to this, but it's all-round capability, still probably better than this. Um, the Wave 10 is kind of in between all of them, so a good racket. Um, and then going upgrading, you would look at the Nano Flare 270, uh, King K9. They would be the primary rackets for you to be considering if you like these kind of specs. Okay, that concludes this racket review for today. This is a quick synopsis of what this racket can do. The, obviously, the full review is at the E-Zone, uh, where we're trying to build a badminton community, so we would ask you to go over there. If you're not an E-Zone member, go over there, sign in, and take a look at the uh, racket pla the E-Zone platform. It's really good for comparisons, really loads of information on each racket page. And in the members only video there, we tell you what this racket is like overhead, smashing, controlling, defending, uh, how much uh, repulsion it has. And it, we go into quite a lot more detail in the review within the E-Zone. If you are an E-Zone member, leave a review for the thousands of people visiting the E-Zone every month. It's so good for them and for you to be able to read what each other or think of using all the different kind of rackets. There's 657 rackets now on the E-Zone, so there's very unlikely you're, you're using a racket that we do not have on there. So please leave a review whatever racket you're using. And uh, for if you're not an E-Zone member, leave a review on any of our social platforms. So 
Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. We promise you we will try and keep a tighter control as possible to anybody who's being unnecessarily abusive about your views on a racket. Uh, we, we know that happens in forums and it's not something that we welcome on any of the platforms that we control. Um, but your honest, helpful reviews are welcome. So please, please have the confidence to do that. And outside of that, listen guys, 48 rackets tested in 2019. Every single video ends with the same thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so, so much for all of the support. You guys are awesome. And you're true Bampton fans. And Bampton is going to keep moving forward and keep moving upwards with the, the worldwide movement that's going on at the moment within Bampton and the countries where it's expanding, um, the coverage which is expanding on TV as well. Really, really good. The more people that watch, the more people that take part, the bigger the sport becomes. So absolutely awesome. Uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for liking. Keep doing that. Keep up the great work. And we will see you on the next video.